Hello, heathens. Hello, heathens. <laughs> Broke up when you said that. It sounded cool. <laughs> oh, we're glad to be back. We took a week off for Halloween, um, which Happy you guys don't Halloween. really notice, but no, no. This will come out same day as recorded, oh. which normally doesn't happen. <laughs> no. We usually, we usually are like one ahead, but you know, sometimes you got to take breaks, especially for Halloween, especially for Halloween. Plus Nicole mm-hmm. had a big thing she was going to, and it was like, she had get ready for it. And do I you want, did. do you want to share anything about last weekend? Oh man. I am not a big advocate of spiritual retreats, but like. I went to this one because I'm part of, you know, obviously this magical group and uh, as we're um, doing magic with each other, they started putting on these retreats that were like um, in New York and uh, it was all of these magicians basically getting together and like last year was about, what was last year about? I forget. Anyway, this year was about um, (laughs) the body of light. Mm -hmm. So, like, how to attain it? What is it? Like, um, it was three days because we go Friday, we do a little entry thing and an opening ritual. And then Saturday is all day from 10 to 7. And then Sunday all day, I'm sorry, 11 to 7. And then Sunday is all day. And that was like 11 to 7 as well. And it's pretty intense. Like this year we did a lot of like meditations and breathing work and like how to ground and what to do. And like um, a lot of theory on uh, Egyptian uh, mystic stuff and Christian mystics. And like how they represent the body of light. And um, uh, it was... It was really good. It was really good for me. For me, it was um, almost a way to measure how much growth I've done since the last one because I don't have anything to compare it to. And uh, and that's what I really appreciate about it and really hope that we keep doing this because it's just kind of nice to get together with people that you you know, it's not like an everyday thing. It's more, it's more of like, Hey, how you been? And like, you actually have something to be like, dude, this is the stuff that I've like seen and went through and what magic has helped me with. And like, and then you get to hear what they've been through and what they've, what their experience is. Cause everybody's different on our journeys mm-hmm. that it's, but like, it's almost like you're talking like another language too, because like, you know, words, and understandings that maybe the common person wouldn't know. And I don't mean it as like a, a slash or anything, but like oh. if I talk about Gebra, not everybody's going to know what Gebra means. Like, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Right. Yeah. But, because like some people don't have their, uh, what do, what do we usually call it? Their mental threshold wide enough to hold into like those new ideas. Right. Right. So it was, it was really cool. And I, and I went alone. This is one of the things that I go alone in and I drove, I was so proud of myself because I drove from Newark, New Jersey, like the city. Cause I'm a Midwest driver, right? Like, I'm like, no, no, you go. It's fine. I'll just wait for my turn. And, uh, you know, in the cities, they not necessarily like that. They're like intense compared to what i'm used to and like new jersey doesn't have like on ramps they have yield signs so Mm -hmm. how we like like oh yeah i'm getting on the freeway so i just have this little extra room just for myself just to get up to speed to where i need to be right and new jersey has a yield sign so like you have to be like go (laughs) 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 I'm like, oh, I don't like this at all. Like, yeah, you're like, this was... is fucking intense. Um, so that was good. And I navigated like the airport and everything 
to best of my abilities and I did I felt like I did pretty well so it was kind of nice to like a little like stressy messy but like I conquered it and achieved all the things I needed to achieve besides getting gas I was <laughs> I was like I'm sorry I didn't feel the take up like I couldn't I was scared yeah. to stop for gas <laughs> really like it's fine we'll just charge you well yeah they just charged me so it was fine perfect Mm-hmm. go you buddy this was a good weekend of wins for you it really was i i and you know the other thing that helps me with i noticed is that because i do a daily practice it gets boring and monotonous monotonous we love yeah. dyslexia we do the mouth dyslexia. that's right mm-hmm. uh monotonous it you get kind of bored you struggle through it like discipline and and all that bullshit and uh this really like renews my my passion for like why i love magic so much like it's a reminder it's it's shown me how much i've i've grown and and i get to um yeah it's just one of those things that was really cool that's so good happy Mm-hmm. yay nicole everybody clap yay <laughs> yay uh, so um back to our regularly regular bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> the scheduled <laughs> program that is regular mm-hmm. greed oh greed and greed and wrath we're back greed and seven, wrath. Sins. seven deadly sins and for you guys we haven't left for us it's been two weeks so feels like we're back um but moving on with the seven deadly sins we're into greed and wrath today and i quite enjoy doing this with you by the way it is it very it's very interesting how and i hope this happens for you our our listeners too you guys because i feel like as we research this stuff it's the more aware i've become of these things like randomly i'll be like Mm -hmm. oh like even the four agreements that was a foreign concept to me for a while ago and having that been brought into my i don't know my vision path i guess you could say and now i'm seeing it awareness yeah awareness Mm -hmm. and like you just the more aware you become because the more educated you come on certain things it's like holy shit you see it all the time it's like getting a new car and then you see that car everywhere Yes, or thinking about that car and you see it everywhere. Do you? Yeah, you might be a little young for this, but do you remember the? Oh, the movie called. Oh shit! It had Rowdy Rowdy Piper in it. Who? Rowdy Rowdy Piper, which was a wrestler. I think they come or something like that. But basically, you would put on these glasses, and then you could see things that you couldn't see before. They live. They live. That's what it was called. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen this. Um, it remind it 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 basically reminds me of that. It's like you can see things that the normal person could couldn't see because you have special glasses now. Interesting. Yeah, it's like the same. I feel like that's what's happening even with the seven deadly sins, mm-hmm. where it's like. You know, it has such a fantastical, whimsical name. Yeah. Like seven deadly sins. But when you break it down and you realize how digestible it is, you start seeing it a lot more. And I'm like, yes. Ooh. ooh, ooh." Like the different types of manifestation it can it can really manifest into, right? Like Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Um so uh do we want to start with green? Yes. Okie dokie. I wrote these two weeks ago. So, what do we got? <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so greed is the desire for material gain. It's slimmer, similar to gluttony and envy, but refers to gain rather than consumption or possession. So it's like that need, that desire, yeah. that constant like want not having enough yes and greed uh the one thing that i they that i had looked up was uh it's it becomes a sin or 
uh, and we're going to use the word sin. Um, just because that's the language we're using, but like, I don't mean sin <laughs> in like a Catholic church way. I mean it in like the, it takes you away from being a good person. Yeah. So one of the things that this, that stuck with me was the, the obtaining of something, usually it's money or uh, material items in spite of, um, where other people are lacking, like in spite of other people. So like if you've gained all of it, but yeah, everybody, like if you gained all the water and all these people are thirsty, like the toilet paper situation, like mm -hmm. you got all this toilet paper and other people that don't have toilet paper because people had too much toilet paper, right? Yes. Like, like there was like, I didn't go out and get toilet paper. So now there's no toilet paper for me to get because everybody else has gotten more. Yes. And, um, yeah, go ahead. You're, you're explaining a much more digestible way of the way that there's a theologian who was a Christian theologist. Thomas Aquinas said it in the 13th mm -hmm. century. He condemned greed because it is a sin directly against one's neighbor. Since one man cannot overabound in external riches without another man lacking them. It's a sin against right. God, just as all mortal sins in as much as man condemns things eternal for the sake of temporal temporal things. So like, essentially it's the, the sin includes like the love of possessions and needing yes. more possessions yes. and that attachment that you get to the 3d materials that you gain throughout life. It, right. It's also when your well being is tied to your possessions. Right. And I think we saw this a lot during the, uh, the fall or the collapse of um, the Great Depression when the stock market crashed, where everybody's wealth was literally attached to their well-being. And we saw people commit suicide and a lot of that. So I can yeah. you can see it play out in, in divine theater, you know, in the world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, you, you explain that. And oh, like I said, a much more digestible way because it, it's basically what you're doing when you're being greedy is you're just, you're harming another. When you're taking, right. taking, 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 taking and not sharing, you're harming another. There was something that I, and I'm not sure if I can find it where it's stated, but there was the guy who wrote down the seven deadly sins had said something about greed he calls people who are greedy murderers because of the wealth they attain, they could have, they could have spread that out. And the people that would obtain that had done well under the wealth that they're spreading out would have lived where the fact that they're keeping all of it, it basically kills them because they're not getting the stuff that they need to survive. Yeah. And that's the big thing is like you're you're taking all of it instead of letting it cycle through you, you keep it and hoard it. Well, that has on on all of society that has a um uh not retribution, is that the word I want? Of like you not consequences. Conse maybe consequences and you maybe you don't see it right away obviously like a lot of people that do have a lot of stuff that don't give to charity or don't have that kind of spread out kind of mentality mm -hmm. um the, i don't see the i don't think they necessarily see it directly yeah right like they wouldn't see it yeah yeah and like the thing is is that with greed it can go further than money can also be fame and possessions, attention, compliments, mm. gifts, another person's time. I mean, you could probably yeah. think of a lot more. But Google defines greed as intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth, power, or food. 
And I was like, okay, Google, thanks for making that easy. All right, exactly. That was a good one. <laughs> uh, I have that the word Greek comes from the old English gritig or voracious, which means always hungry for more. Didn't know that. Oh, wait a minute. Here it is. It says, those who keep for themselves what could be used for the poor are slaying all those that could have lived from his plenty. That was the words. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if we're being really honest, we have come into a place to where, you know, we never feel like we have enough. And it, you know, consume, Absolutely. Consume, consume. I think that's I think that's, con you know, not only consumerism, but capitalism. You have to have consumerism with capitalism or else the, the system doesn't work, right? Yep. If I don't feel, if I feel content, I won't consume. Right. But we're almost born with this, like, I don't know if it's born, but like we're, we're made aware, I guess, of the fact that even now, especially nowadays, I think it's like you buy something and it's almost like you throw it out in the next sweep and then you go to buy something. It's really the buying something that you want, not necessarily the object that you got, right? It's just the continuing of consuming, like I'm just consuming the stuff, right? Yes. Whether it's Netflix, whether it's at a store whether it's at so much consuming mm -hmm. absolutely there's this thing that came up when i was reading greed that i want you to stick with me for a second on okay um the it was like the metaphysical physical version of greed to me and like why greed happens and it it, it came up because you talk often about how the relation to the 3d materials like within high magic and how, um, I can't remember if it was Derek or Damien that had said it, that you should be able to be thrown into an island and be able to create magic still mm -hmm. without having all these 3D materials. And being attached to material goods can keep you from your highest potential. We do know that, right? Like mm -hmm. having a car that you obsess over or just because that's the first thing that came to mind is like, say you like cleaning it every day or you're like going out and you're doing this for that and you're worried about that all the time it's going to keep you from your highest potential of potentially moving through things that you need to move through and when mm -hmm. we talk about magic and people say again stick with me it it isn't real like of course magic's imaginary everything that's ever been sparked or happened or is in this world right now comes from our imaginations. Like magic is the science of imagination. And mm -hmm. you have to understand that everything that has ever come into existence, all of it, everything <laughs> was built right. first in the imagination and second in the physical world. And I feel mm -hmm. like having that knowledge behind it can also understand, help us understand like how it relates to greed in the way of like our imagine. It, it's imaginary because being focused on material gain that's the that's the realm of this the, the, then the realm of ex, the spiritual is ignored sorry i have a lot running through my brain trying to get through this <laughs> <laughs> there's but, a lot in each one of these sins that's for sure i know right <laughs> But like, essentially, we conjure up our own greed in every single way. We decide right. what we think we deserve, what we think we would desire, what we want to set our sights on. And our imagination is what goes beyond what we have to show us more in everything that we're quote unquote lacking. Mm -hmm. Our greed sparks within our imagination. And it, it made me realize also how important high magic is or how doing something spiritual to keep yourself grounded or keep your basically have reins on your own imagination and what you choose to use it for is so important because of greed can get sneaky in there and be like oh, look yeah. at all this stuff you don't have you had you don't have this you need this and it's, then you're like you're well, focused on it yeah exactly right right <laughs> well and you can see how that's and it, it's funny because it's not like greed or any of these sins are like one and done or like um 
all of a sudden you're like, no, no, I'm being greedy. Like it's subtle and it yeah. seeps in. And then it's like a stone on a hill or a mountain that just continues to get faster and faster and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because it doesn't want to necessarily be, um, it doesn't want to be noticed. It doesn't yeah. want to be stopped. It wants to accumulate and grow bigger and thrive in your life. But the Absolutely. more it thrives, the more it will kill you. Yeah. And of course you guys were, we're not, we're not, it, it's, it's a hard one not to, to dip into, right? Mm -hmm. Because we literally live in the most pampered times ever in history that we know of. We're the most uh -huh. pampered consumeristic society since the Roman Empire. And that's, is what it is. It's hard not to dip into. It's totally understandable. It's just when you become more aware of it, it's easier to pull it back in. And I think that's for me, well, also this made me think of why the power of now is so important for me too, is because it really gave me a sense of gratitude of looking around and seeing all my shit. And I'm like, dang, I, yeah. I really don't need anything. This is great. Right, right. I, I, I agree with that because like, I feel like I've come to that conclusion too. Not that I don't buy things obviously or get swept up in like, new stuff but like I now know like I've now learned how to wait especially on books because I love books right oh my god you and me both buddy <sighs> I'm gonna end up having an apartment that just looks like a damn walk-in library book seriously <laughs> seriously because but that's the thing is how many of us have books that we've never fucking read but yet we go and buy another one like I have a list of books that I won't buy because I'm not ready to buy it. Cause I still have shit on the shelf that I have not read at all. Mm -hmm. I have to say I've done that too. I have a list of books I also want to buy, but I have a pile. What I've started doing is keeping a rotating pile of books on the table that I see that aren't put away in the bookshelf. Cause when they're in the bookshelf, it's a pretty decoration in my head. You're right. Right. <laughs> It's no longer a shelf of books I need to read. Look at how I'm beautiful like, this Oh, is. it's so cute though. Look at it. <laughs> so now I keep a running stack of books and I rotate them out because you're exactly right. I, that's a good one. I would, that, mm -hmm. that is a good one. Books, man, they'll get you. They will get you. I mean, I have a list in my Audible. I have a list in my Google book or read or whatever they call it it's google's i have a list in my head <laughs> but i i i realized the re i also realized is that a you know how they try to tell you that like oh it may not be there when you get there and then you're not oh, going to yeah. have it and then what are you going to do and then i'm like you know with amazon Actually, working at the mall has really taught me this. It's like, well, I'm going to be here tomorrow, so I could buy it tomorrow instead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because I was there all the time. It really made me, like, work on that muscle of, like, it's still going to be there. I've walked by that same shirt 50 times, right? Mm -hmm. In the past week. So clearly, when you hear it's not going to be there, you're like, no, no, there it is. Well, my thing is, is like, I've really worked at trying to tell myself that if it's not there, like say you're at a market or something, you're like, I'm mm -hmm. going to come back and look at that. Let me think about it. And like, okay, if I go back and it's there and I'm still thinking about it later, I'm going to get it. And if mm -hmm. I go back and it's not there, it was not meant to be mine. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, especially when you're so into buying things, like... And I would buy things for all sorts of reasons. Like it made me feel better or I'm not going to have it later and I'm going to miss out oh, or, out. right. Or, Ooh. um, I need this or I can't, I won't be able to move on my spiritual practice. Oh yeah. Or, uh, pride. A lot of times pride would come in and be like, Hey, 
Well, we should buy that. We deserve it. We Look, worked hard. You'll be able to show everybody you bought that. Yeah. Yep. You'll be the envy of your people. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Don't deny it. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't deny. Like these are <laughs> these are just the few of the things that I'm sure that I thought of while I was buying things, right? Like oh, yeah. I'm sure there's many more. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know you black out and you buy. That's yeah, that's usually that's usually at like four in the morning when I can't get back to sleep and I'll purchase. I'm like, oh, I need some clothes or underwear or something. I don't know. And then I get the package. And I have two of the same dresses in different sizes because I clearly still wanted that dress. <laughs> you really liked that dress. I really liked it. Yes. I feel like, OK, so. This is also, since we're talking about the consumption of clothes specifically, this is also what I wanted to talk about too. It's making me think about the heavenly virtue that goes along with greed, which is charity. Mm -hmm. And it is the desire to share your um, material and spiritual wealth with others. I think that one simple form of that is donating clothes. Yeah. It's like such an easy way to do charity you're not throwing clothes away. You're not trying to make money off of it. You're literally just taking your extra plethora of things and sharing right. it. And it doesn't, you also can do it in a way that doesn't feel like you're also going in with pride of like, look at all the stuff that I'm giving you. Aren't I great? Yeah. Yeah. It's like an easy way. You just freaking drop it at the door. You're like, please, for the love of God, take this. All right. And you're good to go. And that's Charity. nice. Yeah. And that's nice because they even have those little bends that like you can just put clothes in and yeah. shoes. Like you don't even have to be like at a, nobody has to see you doing it. No. Not at all. And like it's just it's such an easy way. I feel like charity is such I love that that's the heavenly virtue for greed because obviously one it makes sense like the but also too it's just such an easy thing to do it doesn't have to be like this whole thing where you're like i don't have time to go to a soup kitchen and prep pass out soup i don't have the funds to like share right. money with people and yada 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 it's just as simple as like charity can be as simple as like having a conversation with your neighbor or like mm -hmm. being there for a friend like that is charity that is giving your time and helping with like be there for somebody else for their spiritual well-being. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. Because like your time, I mean, that's all money is, is your energy manifested into a material thing. Like every, all the money that I've gotten. I don't know how gifts work, but anyway, mm -hmm. all the money that I've gotten, I've spent my energy receiving it, right? Like especially like skilled trade, it's very easy to see, like, I did this, I get this, and we move on. Like, that's the transaction, right? Right. And it is, it is literally your life force in coins or paper or a credit card. Mm -hmm. That's your life force. If you ever wanted to see it, that's, it's that, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. That's a great way of explaining that. What else you got for greed, bud? Oh, goodness gracious. Let me see here. Um, wrote down hoarding and theft. So these are the things like greed leads to one thing and then it leads to other things too. Yeah. You know, so you, you start to get greedy it starts to overwhelm you. You start to thinking that you don't have enough, like, and then like you need it all. Like the, it, it'll never be enough. You don't have, you're just accumulating more and more and more. Um, it's good. Sometimes I can't read my own writing. 
Ah, looking after another. Okay, so Buddha also had, it was around 5, 516th BC. He came out of, when he came out of his enlightenment, he had the four nobles truths. One of them was about greed. So suffering comes from those craving earthly possessions. One that dies from greed comes back as a hungry ghost, starving and never getting enough. And I think that is one of the levels in Dante's uh, Divine Comedy. Was it Dante? I can't remember. But the Divine Comedy, where it has the seven layers of hell. One of them is purgatory. But one of the levels is greed in purgatory. Because you can you can recover from the sin. Like you can actually like move forward and obtain to heaven. Cause that's what purgatory is. It's a place like you sinned, but you didn't sin enough to be damnation or, you know, never like be able to look at God again. You sinned just enough to not get into heaven, but not go to hell. And that's yeah. purgatory. Um, and greed makes us not be able to see God or feel God. It kind of replaces that. So like you see these people that are um, face down in the sand where they can't actually look towards heaven. Um, so these hungry ghosts would always eat so they don't have or have they can't get full mm -hmm. and that would be buddha's way of like saying about greed and how it would show up in your life and then how the afterlife how you would look in the afterlife interesting um um i know we talked about like uh in the bible how they say greed is the What is it? The root to all evil. And really what it actually says in there, or what we for uh we either we misspell or mistranslated it or something like that. Um, we've taken out the love for money. Or the money is the root to all evil. And what it really is is the love of money. So this is where we get a little messed up is that if we think money is the root of all evil, but the problem with that statement is, is that you need money to live. You need money to survive. You need money to, you know, put a roof over your head and have your well-being. If I don't have all my needs met, I can't worship God. Yeah. Because I'm always worried about like, so this is where it gets a little bit like funny because it's not the love of money or it's not the money itself that makes you a root to evil. It's the love of money that like, I have to obtain all of it. The obsession of right. it. Yes. Um, uh, it was greed. That was the one thing that took the Romans down. You know, they started off and they were like, yes, yes. And then they were like, you know what we need to do? We need to tax these people. Mm -hmm. And they would collect taxes. And the funny thing is they wouldn't tax, they wouldn't collect the taxes themselves. They would have somebody from the village that would be a tax collector. And the only way the tax collector made money was to tax people, their own people more. So the Fun only way that, oh, right, right. So like they would, they would take money from the poor and give it to the rich, obviously. And then like, but the only way the taxpayer would actually obtain money is by, so if the taxes from Roman would only needed five shillings, <laughs> they would charge everybody six or 10 shilling. And then they would get the extra off of it, right? Like, what was his the, name? Robin Hood, Friar Tuck, or something like that. He no, Friar, that. Friar Tuck. No, not, uh, not Robin Hood stole from the rich and gave to the poor. 
But the guy that was collecting it for the that king, was Sheriff, Sheriff of Nottingham. Yes. He and was doing I that. Am yes. He yes. was taking more than what was being asked to then be able to put it in his own pocket. That's right. That's right. Greed. They would greed. Greed. Right there. Greed. And there's another word for it. It's avarice. In some places they use the Ooh. word avarice, avarice. I think it's called. Yes. Avarice. Um, and and so Jesus had said some things like they don't really have the seven I almost said seven ingredients <laughs> seven ingredients we're making a pie a sin pie a <laughs> sin pie sin pie it's a deadly <laughs> sin pie <laughs> <laughs> um they don't, uh, or wait, Jesus said a couple things about it. And like, keep yourself from covenants from a man's life consent of not what is accumulating, basically not accumulating of things. Like don't covet other people. Obviously like don't covet other people's things. Um, And all of this is to help us uh, stay at a, a balanced place of bliss. These are really just, I know we draw over dramatize them and, and especially like Christian church and theology, like definitely over dramatizes it a lot. And even Christians in general do, but, uh, these are really just ways of being like, look, you have free will to do what you want, Right. We're just letting you know that these are the things that could happen if you, you know, go down this journey. Like you start making money because you need to like put food on your table, but you feel so good and you got so much money that you like, oh, now I can buy all these extra things that I did couldn't do before. So now you, you like have all the stuff. Well, all the stuff needs to be maintained. So then you have to put more money into it. And then you buy more stuff that has to be more maintained. And then you buy more stuff. And it's this con uh, 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 continuous accumulating of stuff that really never makes you happy or right. make you feel content. You know, it, it. I'm not saying that, you know, everybody that has money would be this way. It's not like that. It's more of like the individual and the intent behind it that actually makes it whether it's bad or good. Yes, 100%. I also um, have that in Christian theology, the punishment in hell is being boiled alive in oil with the thought that it's the finest, most luxurious boiling oil that money can buy. Oh, yikes! <laughs> boiled in oil, human soup. Oh, uh. no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Do they have to do it over and over again, or is they boiled just once? Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't read that. Mm. I don't know if you do it. I, maybe it's over and over again. Maybe. No, that's not. I don't want it. Well, there was a statement that I found that says you are that you are lucky to be poor or you're the lucky ones. The poor ones are the lucky ones. And I it's a weird statement in this day and age to say because like you wouldn't necessarily feel lucky if you considered yourself poor. And 
That was something that I think Jesus said on the Mount of like, you are the lucky ones. And it's, I, I guess you would have to really like, From the point of view of being poor, you don't feel lucky. Yeah. But probably because I've never been rich, per right. se, that I wouldn't know what the burdens of being rich would be. Right. Either you're probably always trying to obtain it or you're probably always trying to keep it. Right. Like it's a state of being instead of like, again, you can see how this slippery slope gets weird because you're like, well, I have to make more because I got to do this. Like, oh. right. Well, it's like the slippery slope of like you, like you just said earlier, buying more stuff. It needs to be maintained or, oh, I have money now. I can buy a new car. And now I got to pay more for a new car when I didn't have a car payment. And now I'm, I'm also going to do this because now I got to pay for this. And now I got to, it's, it's like the constant, oh, well, now this is added on. I'm making more, but then I'm right back right. to where I was. Right. And that's really the thing I think it is, is that you end up getting more money, but you never change your habits. So then you end up, even though like, you know, last year I made, you know, we'll say, you know, 5,000. And then this year I made 10,000, but yeah, I still feel the same. I don't feel any like different. Like, I don't feel like I'm ahead of the game. I'm still right at that point of like, because I bought more stuff. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if I'm making 5,000 or 10,000, it's still the same because of the state that I'm in a constant consuming, like, Oh, I have more money, but now I have more stuff because I just spend it. Yeah. Or I just hoard, I guess if you hoard it, I don't, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, so even in Islam, they have one about greed and about controlling greed. Um, and how you have to control it so it doesn't overtake you. And again, you're going away from Allah. So yeah. it's, it's these things that we, it goes across all of the religions. It is one of the one things inherently in humans that we have they the almost an animalistic um not trigger but instinct of self-preservation almost so we would do it in one way but like at some point just like anything it becomes um detrimental to your health yeah where you're not taking care of yourself, where you're not thinking about others, where you're not like, and you're not living in the state of, I don't know, I guess I want to say bliss, but that seems kind of weird. Well, I was going to say holiness and I was like, that's not right. <laughs> All right. I like it. Oh. Um, Yeah, the sin of greed is not God. Uh, the, I think the accumulation of money too, especially in our area or day and age, is that you're always like fear for the future instead of having faith in God will provide. Mm -hmm. There's always that fear for the future, like, you know, save the penny for the rainy day kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And which I think obviously like, saving is good because you're stockpiling your energy a little bit, but like at some point it doesn't become good. Right. That pendulum swing becomes too far to one side than the other side. Um, and also we get to the point of like, I'm the only one that's going to be taking care of myself. And we get so afraid of that, but then because we don't have faith anymore, we don't think that God's going to provide for us. Right. And this is draw away from God and into the material world. Not that I'm saying that you should be like holier and thou and like start to go to church or have a, a it's the faith though. Like even because even if you go to church, not everybody has faith in the church either. They still worry about things. They still, 
And really that's the, the biggest thing that spirituality should do for you is give you faith and hope. Like, I don't know how this is going to happen, but this is what we're doing. Like it's the faith and hope. And again, like it's again, how you look at it. You don't want to have this, like, it's not like a vending machine. Right. You know, if I put faith in, you know, what I want comes out. Right. But trusting, like, even in magic, when you, you're trusting the fact that I want this. And this is what I'm striving for, what I'm praying for, or what I'm using magic for. But now I have to do all this other stuff to actually accumulate it. So it's the doing, but it might not look what we think like it looks like, right? So like, I think if I'm going to make this amount of money, I think that the only way to accept or receive that would be to work a gazillion hours, uh, stress myself out, save everything. Like I have a different mentality than other people, right? So like, those are my things that like would, I think that that's how it's supposed to go when the universe is like, you don't, dude, you don't have to do that. Right. We got it over here. But you won't get out of your own way to actually do it. Or there's a time, a period of time that you either need to level up or kind of like move into another like either place, state, either whether that's mental or a physical or actually do some sort of action for you to actually get to where you want to go. But we are judging everything that comes into us. So we don't actually know how to like, oh, I get that I'm supposed to do this uncomfortable thing, like move houses, we'll say, to put me in a better location to better people that they will be more willing to pay for my service or, you know, they, you find some stock market that like they share with you because they're different people. Like it's that kind of thing. It's that uncomfortableness that we really need to lean into. And that's where faith really helps you is in those places that we're unsure, we're uncomfortable. Like, I don't know, but I'm trusting the process kind of thing. Like yes. this feels weird because we get too comfortable and complacent. And that's where greed really kind of gets in and like sinks its teeth in and really starts to ride you yes mm -hmm. um uh the demon for greed is mammon and in when and at some point, uh, Jesus had said something about mammon and he described it as, no, I'm sorry. I think that's wrath. Is it wrath? That I saw that for, where is it? Mammon? Mammon. Yeah, you're right. Is that what you were asking? Um... There was a word, what was it called? Uh, so Jesus described a place in, I don't know, one of the towns he was in. I forget. Anyway, <laughs> it was basically the garbage dump. Mm. And when he described hell, when he describes hell in the Bible, he describes it as this garbage dump. And I, I thought I wrote down the name. And I did not, but it was at, at the end of the city and it was on fire and that's how he described hell. Oh. I don't know why I had to tell you that. I thought Mammon was from there or something. I thought it was all connected and I can't find where. Bank. Oh. Okay. Stick with us, Peach. We're getting it. I know, we're getting it. It was we're a lot it. Of, it was a lot of stuff. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go beyond that. Um, 
so mammon is the demon for greed it originally meant riches or uh property and then it it actually evolved into being a full demon mm. where it actually has an entity um now when we went greed as it evolved over the history of time if we go all the way to the beginning of the of america and the industrial age and um where we really started to see this accumulation of wealth and how everybody could be wealthy in America and um, a lot of growth. There was a lot of growth at this point. Um, and you could come over here with, you know, nothing and then achieve great wealth. And that's what everybody was coming here for. Um, this is also where like, the saying the big fish eat the little fish come from mm -hmm. about that's what little fishes are for is to be eaten mm -hmm. and this is where like the greedy would maybe like say they have a shop or in just like a warehouse and you're working in there well, you're working to give them wealth and you're getting just a little bit. So it's not like fair, really. And really, they're just using up your life force so that you can like eventually retire. It's not a win-win is what I'm saying. It's like more of like they're winning and you just have to survive. It's not this. So that's a big fish eating a little fish right. because they're just using up your life force. Capitalism is another thing in that. The nation of um, how, as we've gotten in America, we evolved over um, this time period where we uh, have deemed capitalism okay and good. And... Um, and I don't want to be like one of those people that like all capitalism is bad or whatever. Like, it's not about that. It's just about of like seeing it, like seeing the fact that capitalism is using you to gain more of what they want. Yes. To gain it all. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I go back to the whole thing of absolute power corrupts. Absolutely whether it's greed, whether it's sloth, whether it, whatever it is, it's, it will corrupt at some point. Right. And there'll be a shift where they don't care about you anymore. Where like before we have, you know, we went from a place where we had poor working conditions and they didn't really care about you, but you had to do it because it was the only thing you had to feed your family, to keep your house warm. And you had to put up with all that stuff just to support your family and to eat that day. Um, where now we've gotten to a better place, or we, at some point, the, the pendulum swung the other way, and it was more of a win-win. You know, like when, I feel like when uh, Henry Ford at some point there was like, oh, wait, you got a pension. If you dedicated your life force to us, we would give you this pension. It's not necessarily even trade, but at least you knew that you were going to be taken care of. You're like, I've dedicated all my life to building cars on this planet that now I can like rest in peace as I'm being put out to pasture, right? Like I'm too old. I'm kind of used up. And now, like, I have this, like, like house on the water or mm -hmm. something. But you're being taken care of more. Where now, it's not necessarily like that. Because I think the pendulum has swung a little too far with capitalism. Like, there's not enough growth happening anymore. But they still want the same amount of money to come in. Like, they're always looking for this, like... 
one up. Like Netflix is a perfect example. It's not like you're going to get a new product. We have the product. Right. We have all, you know, the movies and like they, it's a platform, right? It's not going to grow. It's not going to change. They might change the, the look of it, the avatar of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's nothing new, but yet they keep adding every month. They keep, or not every month, they keep adding every year a, it's more expensive. It gets more expensive. Like remember when Netflix was four ninety nine. Yeah. And now it's like 32 seven, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and, and they, and they have to do that because they're feeding this entity that is never going to be satiated. Yeah, that's the word I wanted. Mm-hmm. You took that right out of my brain. <laughs> I, I could feel it. I was like, <laughs> satiated. That's a great I love that word. That's a great word. Um, Because they have these board members that have put money into the company and they always want to see, they don't care about anything else but profit. Mm-hmm. And the only way to get profit is, but like, and I don't know if this is true or not, but the kind of how I feel about it is that at some point you're going to have all the profit and we're not going to have anything to give you. Right. Because you've got all the money. So I don't know. Um, I don't know what to do. Like you have all of it. Right. There's no more growth because you have all of it. You haven't put it back into the system so it can be cycled more because money should flow through the king should be doing as well as the peasant because not everybody wants everything. Not everybody wants necessarily to be rich. They want to be happy. Right. And everybody has got a different number per se on what happiness looks like. Right. And greed makes it more of like, there is no, there is no end goal it's only consuming it's only acquiring it's only these words that are never going to be filled up Mm -hmm. and that's kind of the sad thing about greed is where it really it really takes you from a place of like finding joy and finding happiness and contentment like contentment like that word we never even use anymore like what is contentment I'm content. Have you ever heard anybody say that I'm content? I don't know. Right? Like, it's not something that would ever come up. And it's such a word that, like, like, it's a good word. That was a good word. I don't know if I have. Probably, but not, not, not enough to say, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Um... Let's see here. So and the thing that I watched, they did do a study on greed and about how um, you know, it's the dopamine release again. So every time you purchase something, you get a hit of dopamine. Yep. Every time you buy something or you clue, maybe you get wealth you get money you get dopamine like it's that continuous feeding uh that good feeling emotion inside of ourselves and what what we don't do what their lack of is at this point in my opinion is that we don't sit with the uncomfy stuff anymore like loneliness or or um wanting or uh, waiting to like I like remember back in the day when there was layaway that is so funny because that came up yesterday in the salon like, we were talking about layaway at Kmart yeah like you had to go in and like give a little money and then like but they kept your stuff right like you you yeah. had it but you you really had to work for it and you really had to like wait for that um that hit mm-hmm and 
we don't do that anymore. We don't sit with that uncomfy kind of feeling anymore. Like if I need a hit, I can go from anywhere from playing a game on my phone to buying something at the store. There's so many chances and opportunities to like get a hit, but none of the stuff really ends up being anything in the long run. Like it doesn't build me a foundation. It doesn't make my house better. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't actually end up, but I think we think it is because we get the hit. Right. Like we think it's doing something right. physically in this world instead of like in our head. It's right. like a false. It's false. <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> what to call it. It's like, it's, it's just. It's imaginatory. Yeah. Yeah. It's completely imaginatory. It's like a illusion. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a complete illusion. Like think about by building a house, you would have to like pour the foundation and like do all the stuff, but it's like work and a progress and like this project that I'm doing. And at the end you're like, ha ha, I did it. Right. And then you get to live in it. Right. But like, we don't have any of that anymore. Not that I, I mean, you know, obviously people buy, build houses and stuff, but like, we don't have that process of that program of like, I'm going to do this. And at the end of the day, and like sacrifice getting what I want right now compared to building it up to getting something that I, that would benefit my life better mm -hmm. later. Yeah. So it's like buying a piece of plastic compared to buying a whole house. Right. That plastic is not going to do you anything. In fact, I bet you that that little thing that you bought now, you're going to throw it away in two weeks. Yep. Instead of waiting to get something that is more meaningful, that would say, you know, maybe like a piece of furniture that stays with you forever. Right. So I don't know. That's what I got on green. Snaps for Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to Wrath. Wrath was interesting to me. Um, because we've done podcasts about anger. Mm -hmm. And this is not what I thought it was. <laughs> so Wrath is the sin of rejecting love and patience when we should or that we should feel for others and opting instead for violent and hateful interactions. It's Basically, like, this is our uncontrolled feelings of hurt, like, hatred and rage and unjust anger. Mm -hmm. It's not just anger. So, to be clear, we're not talking about, we're not saying anger is bad because we, mm -mm. we have been historically known to say that anger is not bad. This is that unjust anger that afflicts most of us in many different degrees, right? And yes. it's when it's happening on a regular basis. It's where you're taking power from other people. Yeah. Unjust is a huge word for this. Yes. Like eye rolling and giving somebody attitude unjustly, like feeding into that. For what reason? Just because you're an angry person or you have something going on and you're feeding that anger inside of you instead of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. As well as it could go up to as serious as mass murder. So let's. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a spectrum here. <laughs> there is definitely a spectrum. Well, the anger is not bad. It's what you do with it. Like if mm -hmm. I have a bad day and I come home and I yell at you just yep. because I'm angry. That's wrath. That's unjust anger. It's what you. Instead of being like, look, dude, I am so mad right now and I don't want to yell at you, but I need to like fuck off for a while. 
and take a bath or whatever you do to like not be angry because it's it's just normal it's normal to be angry exactly. boundary was crossed uh, it's justified right it's like being mad about your life because your life isn't going the way you wanted it to even though you're not doing what you need to be due to getting it to where you want to and then treating your partner like crap consistently that's wrath that's you're rad. letting it take over your life mm -hmm. you're you're letting it seep out and wrath is for me i think about wrath being one of the worst ones because i'm like dude that could just ruin so much for your life that could ruin everything you could lose everything literally all of it and people have like they've lost their life they've lost their freedom they've lost um the loved ones that they have in their life because they couldn't get a control over their wrath or their anger like um it's blinded I mean, we've, we've seen it time and time again yeah i mean you know even with war like war is one of those things that's along with wrath but it's one of those things that like anger starts a war but anger can also prolong a war now mm. i'm not saying that all war would be bad because like if you come into my kingdom and enslave my people I would have to do something or else what kind of a king am I? Yeah. Am I not going to protect my people? So mm -hmm. there is, there is a thing about like war that is justified, but it's all depends on how you do it and what your intentions are. If you are doing it because your feelings got hurt, Compared to like, how dare you enslave my people? Or yeah. how dare you uh, kill somebody that I love? But like then we go back to revenge and wrath. So you have to be careful because again, I, I heard something the other day that helps with this. And it's the boxer knows that the moment he stops boxing and starts fighting, he's lost the match. Yep. So it's that uncontrolled emotion that makes it wrath. And normally that uncontrolled emotion, because again, we're not saying anger is bad because we need anger. No. Right. But it's when it's festering and it mm. becomes unresolved anger that it can mm -hmm. lead to sinful actions and like allow for you to start doing things that could be looked at as like not good for your own mental health and well-being essentially and like if you if you've learned how to work with anger instead of pushing it down or letting it fester and let it get so big that you can't control it anymore and now you're doing crazy shit and sabotaging your whole entire life right you can right use it properly you can it can move you forward in way like good positive like goals and get your needs met and it, you can use it to fuel you like nothing else can absolutely it is a driving force when you can harness it right i have cleaned my entire house uh, top to bottom in a cleaning rage fit it's so motivating. I also feel like anger is the opposite of fear. And you're yeah. fucking angry. You're like, fuck that. I am not scared. We're going. We're doing it. We're getting through this. Let's go. <laughs> anger can be fear, though. Anger can also be fear. Because, like, if I... I mean, think about if you touch something on somebody, you know... You touch something, you talk about something that somebody doesn't want to talk about because of whatever reasons, right? And they bite at you because they're afraid to be vulnerable or they're afraid to be touched or they're afraid to like, anger is that big shield that's like, no, don't go any further. Yeah. Wrath. Like, Wrath. but it separates. It's a separation tool. Mm-hmm. Mm, let's see i have that throughout scripture wrath is constantly portrayed as something to be avoided and replaced with virtues such as patience forgiveness and love 
-hmm. And the diction the dictionary describes wrath as strong vengeful anger or indignation or retribution retrib retribution retributory. Why do I want to put two T's in there? To do retributory. Retributory. Well, that's what you're getting. Punishment for an offense or a crime. So it's like that seeking out that vengeance after somebody's wronged you. However you yes. feel wrong, you go Justify. after them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is wrath. Is what the dictionary describes it as. Which we, I know there's countless of like stories about somebody taking their justified wrath and like destroying, like obviously somebody hurt Trinity. I would be okay with wrath and the sin that it came with. Right, like I would yeah. be okay. I'm paying the price. I'm okay yeah. with it. Um, but it's not, and not that I'm, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it's still not justified. It's still not like, it's not going to make me feel better. I feel like a good way to say that is, it's still a slippery slope. Yeah, it's so slippery. That's a slippery slope. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> once you do it once, then you're justified to do it again. And like, it may start off as like somebody hurt my child to like somebody stubbed my toe. And that's the slope. It goes downhill from there. Mm -hmm. It's a hard one. I mean, just like greed. Greed's a hard one to balance. Like you would have to be very like, because I've seen many owners of businesses that started out with very good intentions that slippery sloped it until they were doing shady shit right it's like the way the the one that you just described too is like if you allow to start controlling your movements instead of having control of it that's when that slippery slope really starts to happen because what can happen too is all the after effects from letting that wrath control you like yeah. the grief the guilt the shame the all the you know all the things that come along with feeling like yes i you're gonna have a moment where you're like yes i did it i got back at that person fuck that person mm -hmm. but then as you calm down and you realize what the hell did i just do right when you start to come to sabotage my whole life right there yeah yeah in one fell swoop because mm -hmm. somebody made you mad. Yeah. You lost control. Like, and that's the kind of, like, we don't think about, you know, a lot of times we don't think about it. And um, in that way, like I said, we get blinded by the word justification. And this, you know, could be anything from like, you stole something for me or I felt slighted by you or and then i'm justified to be mad at you when really anytime that i've felt that way and thought about it thought my way through it i've always come back to the place of like it's not going to do any good if i come up and yell at you because of something that i feel justified for it's about me it's not about you Mm -hmm. yeah like I can't like I I have to find my way through it to understand it which sounds I guess a little like pussyfied about like oh you're just taking like a more passive way of doing it which maybe I don't know I don't know everything <clears throat> But I do know that if I was going to do something like wrath, like maybe kill somebody or yell at somebody and not be able to take it back because I can't take it back once I do it. I would argue to what you had just said about it being pussified that it's not just an aggressive reaction when you use anger in a different way. It's not just for aggressive reaction. You It can often provide you with information that allows you to better engage with the world around you and make better choices mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're angry and you're seeing things differently. All right, right. 
sometimes anger can open up that your eyes to things that you didn't see. Absolutely. It's a great way. It's a great teacher. Anger, anger and I have become friends. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily like being angry, but like, God damn, like when you're like, after you calm down and let it go a little bit, you're like, fuck, I see it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Open your eyes up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, it's like that friend that you're like, fuck, you're here again. Come on. Tell me what I got. Give it to me. Give it to me, baby. Right. Like you like seeing them, but at the same time you don't. And that's where that brain and that control comes in of like being able to control your anger in the way of you're feeling it and you're experiencing it. So we're not dissociating from it, but you're right. also not getting to a point of wrath where you're letting it take the reins and be in control. <laughs> right. Right. Is so important. Yes, I agree. Because acknowledging anger is what you need to do. Yeah. Destroying your life is what you don't need to do. <laughs> or reach it. <laughs> um, uh, oh, Gay, gay Hana. It's G A A. No, I don't know if that's how you spell it. Gay Hana. Gay Hana. It's the garbage. It was in wrath. Is the oh. burning trash? Because that's how I don't know why I put that. It basically, was to describe hell. Like the only version of hell that we have in the Bible is when Jesus says this. He references this place. Gotcha. Yeah. And it went, and it was when he, with wrath. With wrath. It had to have been because that's where I wrote it down at. Because I'm well organized. <laughs> <laughs> and I can read all of my own writing. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, in Christian theology, your punishment in hell is being dismembered alive. Facts. Scary. <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine. It's fine. And then I'll just I, be in pieces. Yeah, literally. I'm like, geez. No, thank you. Um, no, thank you again. <laughs> the heavenly virtue for anger is forgiveness because forgiveness is the opposite of anger. And when you forgive, you let go of the things they did that hurt you and mm -hmm. you love them despite their flaws. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness can be a hard one. Well, especially somebody that has either taken from you or, you know, destroyed something of yours or you know where you're justified in it again it goes back to the whole thing of like i'm justified by being angry it's like okay but you holding on to the anger is like holding poison into your mouth like eventually it's going to consume you yeah you and that's what people don't necessarily see and it was a hard one for me to see especially when you're justified about it like if i'm angry because you hurt my feelings that's a little different but like you wrecked my car, you know, like, and I am justified because you're a bad driver and blah, 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 and whatever, right? Whatever things that we, that we tell ourselves, but like, yeah, you forget that that person was like 17 and like, just learned how to drive and like, yeah, you didn't have patience or compassion for that person. Like, good example. Um, even, uh, you know, there's a good thing about forgiveness that I kind of roll my eyes about this because I'm going to talk about Jesus and the crucifixion and I kind of like hate that I'm going to do it. But anyway, here we go. So when I watched Passion of the Christ and they took now, granted, like a lot of stuff is, or all the stuff is metaphors, but like we're going to go with this. When I was watching it and they were taking him to beat him and to get him ready for the crucifixion and they did all this stuff to him and stuff. Um, never once did he in the movie say that they were wrong 
or they were um don't do it he never fought them he never showed any anger he only you know did what he was supposed to do i guess is the best way to put it yeah but when he's on the cross and he says uh forgive them father forgive them for they know not what they do where in that moment of having all that stuff done to him in in anger in wrath he never reflected back to them and that was one of those things that i like it really stuck with me because how do you go through all of that anguish if we're talking about it literally, obviously, but like, how do you go through all of that and still come up to the point of like forgiveness? How? Unconditional love, baby. To me, as a kid, that was unconditional love. That's crazy. That is love without conditions because with literally conditions. You're right. You're no anger, right. no bitterness, pain and sorrow, of course, makes a lot of sense. But like to sacrifice yourself for others is unconditional love. It's just wild. It's a wild concept yeah. that I don't fully under, I grasp. But I, I remember watching it and just being like, how like he's in front of the roman i uh, don't uh he wasn't the emperor it was like a roman side piece i don't know some manager <laughs> roman side piece. <laughs> that was a good one <laughs> yeah like the governor of the town kind of thing yeah it's a roman guy, side, right? piece. Uh, side piece not right? the main one not the main guy and, you know, his wife had told him, like, don't, don't crucify him. This is bad. Like, don't do this. And, of course, he had to because of, like, politics and, like, all the stuff. And he, I think he was trying to tell him, like, say something. Do something. Like, say something so I can let you go. And he was like, no, dude, you got to do this all on your own. And I just remember being like wowed by that. Like, how? Like the state of grace that you have to be in for that bullshit is like, yeah, almost. I feel unattainable. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. It's wild. I'm like, couldn't be me. <laughs> Not 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 today. I mean, I I have high hopes, of course. Like maybe in a couple lifetimes. I don't know. We'll see. Like, but how? I don't. It's I don't know. It's just amazing. So mm -hmm. anyway, I'll get off my Jesus kick right now. Maybe I might come back to it. But um. Yeah, like turning the other cheek. That was one of the things that came up as like a, you know, you just turn the other cheek. To like anger? When yeah. something or like when something happens Vengeance. that you don't Yeah, like wrath. Like not anger, but wrath. Gotcha. Like turning the other cheek. Like instead of going out and killing them, <laughs> turn the other cheek. But I don't know. I don't know how to say, like, how do you do that in your head, right? Like, I get anger, and I get how I can get to wrath. But how do you turn the other cheek and make it right in your mind without you feeling like you didn't do enough or you didn't... How do you justify the forgiveness is what I'm saying, the four agreements, baby. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Because you start with not taking it personally. Even right. though it feels fucking personal. Because again, the person held the personal. gun to your head. Yes, yes, yes. It's not personal. 
Dude, it took me so long to figure that one out. Yeah, I remember that when it still sometimes I'm like, bitch. <laughs> how do you take that not personal? Don't take it personally. <laughs> right? I'm like, ooh. I'm not taking this personally. I'm not taking this personally. Okay. Oh, I'm taking it personally. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to take it personally, but it's hit. It hits. Yeah, sometimes it gets you, man, and you got to like yeah. rein it back in. You're like, come on. That's we're not the way we're supposed to go. Self-control and uh, it's where controlling the little voices in your head that constantly are trying to sabotage you comes in and like trauma and yeah all of it yeah that's why walking the middle path and working on yourself is hard as fuck dog absolutely (laughs) you know it's funny because i always think the middle path is kind of like driving the middle lane in the highway yeah that's a yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i like that yeah because i'm great on this side i'm great on this side but the middle one is like i got cars on both sides and we're not going too fast, but we're also not going too slow. Right, right. It's crazy. <clears throat> um, so in the Dante or the Divine Comedy, there's nine levels levels of hell. The fifth level is for anger or wrath. And this is where they're in the river sticks and they're trying to pull themselves out of the river. But really what they're doing is they're tearing each other apart. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like the same thing as you had said, where they're tearing themselves apart or something like that, but just they're memory. actually dismembering. This is where they're trying to get on top of, out of the river, but they can't because there's so many people in there that they're trying to get out. And instead they're they're tearing each other apart. Um, the demon related to is Amon. Oh, I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) Uh, He has been noted to spit flames, have a raven beak, and a tail of a serpent. Oh, Oh, yes. Um, Also, Satan is kind of uh, part of wrath because they, they say that wrath is the most powerful sin. Although they kind of say that about all of them, but anyway. Um, so it would make sense that Satan is wrath because he's the most powerful thing in hell. Right. In some religions and stories. Yes. Because also there's a whole thing about Satan and Lucifer are not the same thing. Let us not go there during this. That will be a whole... This podcast is about to get another two hours long, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I figured I had to say that because I wanted to make sure we, and I, you know, I, I think that people know, but like, I just wanted to make sure that people knew that Satan's not Lucifer. Right. That they're two separate entities. Uh... Um, a good way to look at wrath is look at the story of Achilles in the Greek mythology. Um, this is a good story to read to help you have a deeper understanding of wrath. Okay. Um, and again, oh, so they I, I watched this thing where they talked about um how like being a soldier in war, wrath isn't what you use to win the war. Mm-hmm. Wrath is the uncontrolled emotion that has just driven out of control. So you're you're almost on autopilot at that point. You're not thinking. Mm-hmm. You're not in control. So they talk about how soldiers in war have a job to do it's not personal it's not murder it's 
you came on to you you crossed my boundary i told you not to we had a peaceful meeting and you said fuck you and i now we have to you know you're not respecting any of my boundaries is kind of how it is in a layman sense so then you have to you have to fight for your people you have to fight for your land you have to fight for the boundaries that you have so when you're fighting you're not necessarily using wrath at it you're using um bravery mm. or just even something that you're supposed to like do you're not murdering in a sense of like i'm doing this cuz i'm all powerful and i get to smite your life it's not that it's done because you have to you gave me no choice yeah where murder is personal you know like you coveted my wife or my husband or you stole this from me and now i'm going to get you and make you suffer <laughs> so they were talking about how wrath is kind of, again it's this thing that's innately in us anyway and it's a primordial feeling where they said when we first started to develop our brains we had brains of like dog crocodile and monkey so we have each of those brains in of us now, what happens in evolution is that you got all these layers that started to form around it. So you have your frontal lobe, too, that actually can control, what is it, the medulla, uh, agmadula? What was it, the water boy thing? Medulla oblongata. Yes. So the frontal lobe controls it. But if you don't have the frontal lobe, you can see how that can that won't work, right? So yeah. you get into these blind rages. Um, uh, so I put down here is anger is a red flag. Something, something that I'm not dealing with. And this is where this goes back to what we were talking about earlier about anger, really helping you and being a friend to you, a true friend, like somebody that can tell you like, dude, you're being a dick, mm -hmm. but loves you at the same time. Like not in a manipulation way, not trying to get something from you. Like a true friend. That's like, what are you doing? Why, why are we doing this? Like somebody that can bring you back down and talk some sense into you right? for not their personal gain. Right. And that's what, you know, a true friend can be like, Hey, I see these red flags. We need to like put the brakes on, or maybe we can think a better way of like doing this. Right. Or dealing with this or, you know, that kind of stuff. And we just have to be careful with anger because that's really what separates our connection to humanity. Right. That's all I got on anger. And that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. Okay. So next week we will be doing lust and envy. Yeah. And then we have one more after that. And we're almost done. We're, all, we're getting close to the end of the season here, babe. I know it's November. What the? Yeah, that's crazy. We have Thanksgiving in what? Three weeks? Two weeks? Three weeks? That's three weeks. Wild I think. to think. Now I got all nervous because I don't have any Christmas presents. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, uh, it happens every year. We know this happens. We know uh, it goes fast. And every year I'm like, huh? <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> Why is it happening so fast? Why? Why is this happening? This is bullshit. Okay, well, you got anything else for the peoples this week? No. Okay. Just acknowledge, see if you can see these sins in the public. Or Don't call them out. <laughs> Do not do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just recognize them. 
Just be like, oh, there's a little greed over there. I see it. Or, ah, oh, there's a little wrath over there. I see it. Or look at that pride. Right. Hopefully you'll start becoming more aware. Yeah. All right, peeps. Well, we'll see you in the next episode.